In the ancient Torian palace, Atea orders Mungo, her giant chief of warriors, to bring her positive proof of the death of Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk, the Ratorian slave. Accompanied by Jeanette Burton, Wong Tai starts in the dead of night for Atea's subterranean treasure vault. Meanwhile, Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk, following their escape from the Torians, have taken refuge in the corral of Black Maluk, a huge elephant Tarzan has befriended. Having perfected their plans for the freeing of the jewel pit slaves, the three friends cautiously leave their refuge under cover of darkness. About to climb the paddock wall, they're suddenly surrounded and attacked by Mungo and his huge yellow-skinned warriors. At Mungo's shouted command, torches instantly flare up, lighting the paddock and Black Maluk's corral with a weird yellow radiance. With the high-pitched death cry of the yellow giants, Mungo, his heavy sword sweeping through a great arc, leaps past Black Maluk directly toward Tarzan. Riga Tantor! Mundolo Valmagane! Mundolo! At Tarzan's words, the elephant, trumpeting angrily, lunges forward to thrust his mighty bulk between the ape man and Mungo's yellow warriors. With flailing trunk and gleaming tusks, Black Maluk drives the warriors from his corral. Tarzan, meanwhile, sidesteps Mungo's savage charge. Before the yellow giant can regain his balance, the ape man springs in close. Quick as thought, he launches himself astride Mungo's broad back. His mighty arms seek and gain a full Nelson on the yellow giant. With a roar of fury, Mungo drops his sword and throws himself to the ground. Tarzan's grip tightens. Tighter and tighter draw the steel bands. Lower and lower upon his breast, Mungo's head is forced. Suddenly, under the flickering torchlight, the great muscles of Tarzan's shoulders and biceps leap into corded ridges of iron. A final supreme effort, and the vertebra of Mungo's mighty neck part with a dull snap. Holy St. Patrick. And did he ever see the likes of that, Kyluk, my lad? By the great image. With bare hands, he has vanquished the mightiest of Atea's warriors. Come on, you two. Over the wall. Oh, give me a hand, Kyluk. Pete oh, and them guards are making for the paddock gate. Oh, they'll be trying to head us off. Where are you, Tarzan? Here. Drop down. Kyluk coming? He's right behind me. Oh, them guards are I coming. Know. They'll be round here in another minute. All right, Kyluk. Stay close to the wall, you two, and follow me. Beware of the haunting lions, Tarzan. If Atea has released them all, don't worry about Numa. He'll warn us before he attacks. Just now, we're getting clear of the paddocks and out of this part of the city. Wait. We're going the wrong way for the slave pits. I know. We'll circle back in a few minutes, and we've left the guards behind. Here, down this side street. The warriors, Tarzan, see? They gather at the spot where we left the paddocks. Sure, and it'll take them a long time to decide which way we've gone. <laughs> We're well rid of the heathen devils. Oh, Bigotti, <laughs> I'd like to see Atea's face when she hears how her fighting man Mungo was killed. Under the eerie light cast by hundreds of flickering torches, the long columns of foot and elephant paws of Rator move swiftly like regiments of huge yellow phantoms through the shadowy jungle night. At their head in an open war howdah strapped to the broad back of a huge elephant ride the mighty yellow-skinned Shan of Rator and Paul Darno. With the subdued rumble of far-off thunder, the rapidly moving columns quickly approach their goal, the walled city of Tor. Oh, Sean Rator, if only we are in time. Do not allow that thought to worry you, Paul Darno. We shall arrive in time, long before the break of day. J'espère que oui, comment? I hope so. It is only because I am so anxious about Tarzan and our friends that I worry. If we should arrive too late to help them... Be easy, friend. 
the feast of Pantu, the time set for their sacrifice, is still two days hence. Ah, we oui, just say so. I know that. But the Temurum Poltar have succeeded in eluding Uka and have reached Tor with word of our coming. <coughs> Listen, there's the voice of Uka there beyond us in the darkness. <coughs> If only he has taken Timur and put down. We will soon know that, then down all. Look! Uka! Oi! Hey, Bonnie! Halt the columns, my father! Let the sound of their advance warn the Torians! You are less than a lot from their gates, Now father. we are closer than I had thought. Uka! Send Tebani! Wahulu! So! my son. And what of the traitors, Temor and Polta? They are dead. We overtook them as they were leaving the edge of the jungle opposite the main gates of Tor. The wound Paul Dono gave Temor held them back. Par exemple. I do not see how he came this far with that wound. Though it was not fatal, it was still a bad one. A very, very bad one. He was exhausted from the loss of blood and on the verge of death when we overtook them. And Poltar? Died as a Rotorian warrior, with sword in hand. Ah, good. Then Atea has received no word of our approach. And you, you will begin the attack when? Uka will see to the placing of the foot warriors and the tiles which are to draw the Torians from the main gates. You will return and join us here, Uka, after placing your men. We will open the attack upon your return. We do not wait for daylight. What think you, Paul Dano? A surprise attack by night, Monsieur Le Chan, would be my suggestion. Under cover of darkness, we may approach to the foot of the walls without being seen or heard. And the sham attack at the rear of the city will draw most of the Torians away from the walls we must scale to gain entrance to the city. Exactly. But you forget that Tarzan is expecting us and will attempt to open the gates to us. If only he is not a prisoner or dead. Uh, in that case, Atea herself shall pay the debt with her life. But we waste time. Go, Uka. See that your Tars have their orders. They must not open the attack until the remainder of our force is in position. I will rejoin you at the main gate as soon as I have carried out your orders, my father. And I, Shan Rator? You will remain at my side, Paul Darno. Atari! Antaruk, Arthur, Andrak. Come, friend, we go to the gates of Tor. Meanwhile, ever on the alert for Artea's prowling, hunting lions and the many squads of yellow guardsmen patrolling the streets and roadways of the cities in search of them, Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk move swiftly, silently through the darkness to the great heavily barred gates of the jewel pits. Them gates are not going to be easy to climb, Tarzan, especially with guards outside and in. Getting over the gates will be simple. The guards, we should have little fear from them, Tarzan of the Apes. They are never more than five or six in the guard house on the outside here. And at this time of night, they will all be sleeping. Do you think you can climb that gate, O'Rock? Not without a rope and without making enough noise to raise the dead. No, oh, I'm no monkey. How about you, Kylo? Yeah, the gate is high, friend. And all right, then listen. I'll get over the gate. You two stay here in the shadow of this wall until you see me drop down inside. Then come to the gate. You'll find it open. Sure. And I hope one of them hunting lions don't come prowling around here just when Kailuk and I are alone. If Numa comes, climb the wall. Kailuk will help you up. I'm going now. Don't leave this wall until you see me on top of the gate. Sure, and I wish this part of the job was over. It is a fine chance we stand of getting killed in there, Kailuk, my lad. 
It is the chance fighting men must take, Uruk. One can die but once. Faith, and I can think up a lot of things better to do than die, my friend. <laughs> it is the last thing I expect to do. Yet, you are a man of great courage. Oh, don't you believe it. It is only a pose characteristic of the Irish, my lad. Sure, and I would you believe it. <laughs> I've been so scared I couldn't tell you the name of the game we're playing. The, the, the game, my friend? Oh, I can't even tell you the score. Look, Tarzan's sitting astride the gate. There he goes, down inside. Come on, my lad, that's our cue. If we can get past the guardhouse now without waking them fellows. The gates are opening. Come. Faith, and they should oil them hinges. That squeaking sound is like the wail of a banshee. Inside a rock. I look, quick. Here we are, my lad. You're closing it again? Yes. Slide that bar back into place. We'll leave it closed till we're ready to go out with the slaves. Right here. Yeah. And know what? Straight for the nearest slave shed. We'll get the key to the bunk chains and release the slaves as we come to them. Have a come care, Tarzan. Have a care in passing that open guard shed there. Now, look. If we're interrupted, Kailuk and I'll hold off the guards. You get the key and release the slaves. And I'll send them out to help you as I free them. Quiet now. Here's the guard shed. If only Quiet. the... Into the shadows quickly, friends. He thinks me a guard. Don't wait, O'Rock. Go on to the slave sheds. Forward, Tarzan. Forward. He has seen us all. Come on, then. Follow O'Rock. Here we are, Kailuk. The slave shed. O'Rock. Yes. I'm unlocking the head and as fast as I can. Outside, ye yellow devils, outside! Hoi, say Fanny! Say Fanny, London! When the slaves come out, Kailuk, tell them to use what they can as weapons. Rocks, chains, anything. Here come the guards! Having rescued Jeanette Burton from the Chamber of Serpents, Wong Tai has forced her against her will to accompany him to the subterranean treasure vault of Atea, White Queen of Tor. Led by the Shan of Rator and Paul Darno, the Ratorian army, moving rapidly through the jungle toward the walled city of Tor, is joined a short distance from their goal by Uka, who reports the death of Temur and Paul Tar. Meanwhile, following the killing of Mungo by Tarzan, O'Rourke, Kailuk, and the ape man have stealthily entered the jewel pits under cover of darkness in an attempt to free the pit slaves and lead them in an attack upon the palace. As Tarzan and his two friends creep past the shelter of the sleeping guardsmen toward the nearest slave shed, one of the yellow men awakens, sees them, and rouses his companions. Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk run for the slave shed, followed by the awakened Torian. Get that key and release the slaves. Oh, sure, and I'm doing just that. We'll be with you in a minute. The guards, yelling fiendishly, rush toward Tarzan and Kailuk, brandishing their heavy swords. Kailuk, grasping the sword he has taken from the wall of the Torian house, stands with his back to the wall of the slave shed, awaiting the charge. A grim, savage smile twists his yellow lips into a snarl of hate. A short distance from him, legs spread, feet gripping the rocky ground, stands Tarzan. In his hands, the ape man grips the end of a ten-foot length of heavy chain, which he swings round his head in a great swift arc. Coolly, he watches the oncoming charge. Presently, as the guards come close, the great muscles of his arms and back swell into corded ridges of steel. He whirls the heavy chain once. Let's go! The impromptu weapon flashes through the air, whirling end for end, crashes into the leading guards, flattening several of them to the ground. Ah, uh, get out there, ye yellow devils! Get out there and fight! Tarzan! Before the remaining guardsmen can gather themselves for a second charge, Tarzan leaps forward. Quickly, he snatches up from the ground the swords dropped by the Torians, knocked down by the whirling chain. Springing back beside Kailuk, he tosses the swords, all but one behind him, at the feet of the liberated slaves. Tell them to pick up those swords and follow us, Kailuk. Undaka Raturi, Undaka Turi, hey! Tukwa Labani! Take some of the slaves, Kailuk. Get between the guards and the gate. Don't let them open it. Give no quarter unless they join us. Aruk Tarzan! Hey! Atari! How long Oh, oh be good, Tarzan, my lad. You have them on the run now. The rest of the slaves. You haven't released them all. Oh, dibble a bit. I got the one shed full out and stuck the key into the hands of one of the slaves. He's freeing the rest of them. I'm here to help you. 
Well, it's about all over. What's left of them have thrown down their arms. They'll be ready to come over to us. Sure, and it would be all over just when I'm putting on me fighting clothes. Don't worry, my friend. There'll be enough fighting to suit even you. It is finished, Tarzan of the Apes. We are in control of the pits. Rather than lose their lives, the guards have joined us. What now, friend? The palace. Arm the slaves with whatever they can find. When we open those gates, we're going to meet plenty of opposition. Oh, sure. And the noise we made must have aroused the venerable ancestors of all these heathen devils. Let's go, Tarzan. We are ready, Tarzan of the Apes. Right. Open the gates. Come on, O'Rourke. Hi, Luke. Handaka, Tony. Handaka. Far beneath the palace of Tor in Atea's treasure cave, Jeanette Burton stands near the closed door of the vaulted, dimly lit cavern. Fearfully, she watches Wong Tai as he moves, oblivious to all but the vast treasure surrounding him, among the heaps of gold ingots and open caskets of precious and semi-precious stones. The flickering yellow light from two torches throws eerie, mysteriously creeping shadows upon walls and floor as the Chinese plunges avaricious hands first into one gleaming heap, then another. <laughs> ah, Jeanette, my dear, a treasure, a treasure. <laughs> a treasure such as the genie of Aladdin himself could not have produced. Oh, hurry, Dr. Wong, hurry. Let's get out of this place. Give me the creep. Presently, presently. Look, these rubies. <laughs> Ah, like unfathomable blood-red eyes, glittering, inscrutable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take them. They are yours. No, Dr. Wong, they're Atea's. I don't want them, and you should... Atea, a savage who has no idea of their value. Then I will take them, and whatever else I can. And sometime, sometime we will return to this... What was that? Listen... Nothing, my child. <laughs> you are permitting your imagination to get the better of you. We are alone. Alone with the ransom of a hundred kings at our feet. Oh, but, but what if we were to be caught in this place? <laughs> eh, nonsense. Who is there to find us? Atea? The entire palace sleeps. But I'm sure that someone followed us through those damn corridors. I... I felt their presence. Atea thinks you dead, my dear. Killed by her pet executioner in the chamber of serpents. Come, select what you like, and we will return to my chamber. I have all I can carry. No, I don't want any of it. I only want to get away from here as quickly as possible. Ah, by the shadow of the great image, it is an evil play of fate that one must leave such treasure to yellow-skinned savages. Oh, I'd give it all ten times over to be a thousand miles from here. Ah, well, the Pekin Wall has but one gate, though many real roads lead to it. And once we are out of this city, it should not be impossible, with the assistance of our guiding ancestors, to find a road leading back to this treasure. Oh, how can you even think of returning... The chances are all against our even leaving Tor alive. Oh, Atea's hatred of us all, excepting well, Tarzan, perhaps. It's so deep, so savage. Assuredly, my dear. But our immediate need is less to describe Atea's hatred in terms of classical analogy than to find a means of baffling its venom. Well, which we certainly can't down here in this creepy dungeon. Very well, my dear. We will return to my chamber where we may lay our problem before the spirits of our distinguished ancestors and with a fitting request for their assistance. Come. Great heavens! Tanya and a tail! Okala Danka! Panaluk! Well, my Wong Tai, it seems that the missing key to the treasure cave has been found. Or perhaps it has never been lost. The acumen of the illustrious daughter of Tor may be computed neither by rule nor by measure. 
Her perceptions are sharper than the sword of a Taiping. Is that all you have to say, my loyal Wang Tai? There are times, heaven-born, when the classical perfection of my venerable tongue is strangely inadequate to express emotion. And you, Janet Burton, how did you escape from the Chamber of Serpents? Wang Tai followed the guards. When they left, he opened the door. And where, Wang Tai, did you find the key to my treasure cave? He didn't find it, Atea. I did and gave it to him. At his suggestion, perhaps. My watchful Tanya saw you leave the quarters of Wang Tai together and followed you here. Well, so be it. You shall die together immediately in the fires of Tor. Meanwhile, led by Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk, the horde of freed slaves armed with clubs, lengths of chain, and weapons taken from guards and warriors overpowered in the dark streets are moving grimly onward toward the palace. Faith, Tarzan, taking the palace will not be easy. Look, down there in the square, the yellow devils are gathering for the main entrance and stairway. Keep to the side streets till we reach the square. Then a quick rush on the palace. Once inside, we can hold it against the warriors. If only Ukar and the lieutenant were here with the Ratorians. Ah, well, it will be a fine brawl as it is. What of Atea Tarzan of the Apes? What do you intend doing with her? We'll take her prisoner. Use her as a hostage for Jeanette. Faith, and why not hold the she-devil until we're all, slaves included, out of the city? <laughs> a fine traveling companion she'd make. Now, to capture the woman will be impossible, Tarzan. We can easily escape through any one of many secret passageways leading out of the palace. Well, we'll try anyway and hope for the best. Now what? There's an awful lot of yelling and commotion going on up there on the walls beyond the palace. Keep the slaves from rushing the square, Kailuk, till we see what's going on. Antaluk! Atari! The Torians are forming their towers there before the palace and marching toward the walls. Only some of them. Plenty left to make it interesting for us. What is it, Kailuk? Oh, fun, too. It is good news, friend. The Shan Rator and Uka have arrived. They are attacking at a distant part of the wall. Oh, be gary, the saints be praised. Now we'll give these yellow devils a surprise of their lives. We'll take them front and rear. Come on, Tarzan, my lad. Wait. If it's Darno and Uka, they're expecting us to open the gates for them. Why would they begin their attack at some other part of the wall? Perhaps a sham attack, Tarzan, to lead the Torians away from the main gate? You're right. That would be Darno's tactics. Listen, Kailu. You lead the slaves. Get as close to the gates as you can from the south side. Then hit the Torians from the rear. Keep their attention from the gate if you can. And you, Tarzan? Don't worry about us. O'Rourke and I'll be there to open them. When you see the gates are open, make straight for the palace with your slaves. Don't let anything stop you. Understand? Aru Tarzan. Hey, Atari! Tebani! All right, O'Rourke. Come on. We'll reach the gate from the other side. Oh. Ah, the heathen devils have seen us. They're trying to head us off. Sure, and it's a fine job we've cut out for ourselves. It'll be a race. I'll take care of the gate. You go back with Kylo. Ah, just for that, I take a fall out of you myself. If I wasn't so sure you could lick me, telling an old rock to stay out of it indeed. Uh, save your breath. Run. Oh, it is a race you want here. Eh? I'm right with you. And the devil take the hindmost. Look out for them swords. <laughs> 